Hey guys, Mr. 224 here with another video. Um, before we start, I'm just thanking you for the support, so keep commenting, liking, and sharing, uh, stuff like that. So, in this video, I'll be showing you how to make a craft bucket server for Minecraft. Uh, this will be updated for every version, so I'm not going to say any version for now. Um, so, because it's always the same thing, just a newer version of the jar file, which I will show you in a second. So, the first thing you want to do is create a new folder. I usually just call it craft bucket. It's the simplest thing to do. Now, craft bucket, I like to put it in my find, finder sidebar right here. So I can always access it really easy. So now we actually want to download the server. So this link will be in the description. And as I said before, this will always be updated. So everything's the same except for the jar, which this place will always be up updated. So you just click here. No matter what version of Minecraft you're in, save the file. If you're in, uh, sorry, that's an older version. If you're in uh, Safari, just download it normally. Uh, then once it's done downloading, there we go. You could just quit Firefox. We don't need that anymore. And you could go into your downloads and just drag that out of here. So now that we have this, I want to put it inside the craft bucket server. Inside, sorry, the craft bucket folder. Wow. Next, what you want to do is rename it. For this video, you have to rename it because I'll explain that later. So craft bucket jar. Take out all that R four one one stuff like that or anything extra. Just craft bucket jar. Now that you got this, you want to open your text edit. So you go into this little spotlight and write in text edit, and you'll have it right there. I already have it open right here for start command. Now this start command will be in the description. So if you have a new one, you'll open your text edit. You'll go to format, make plain text, and you'll have, this, and then you're going to copy it from the description and paste it into here. So I'm just going to, once you have this, you want to save it. So save and save it to your desktop or wherever you want and call it server or start doesn't matter you can call it server dot command that's important you can't write dot doc or dot text or whatever the text edit ending is it has to be dot command so uh, then you do save and you can have it here so it'll say shell it might even have a little picture here so you want to just put it in here now it has that, see that little picture of a terminal window so this is how you're actually going to start your your server by clicking on it. But if you click on it now, it'll say it cannot be executed because you don't have access privileges. So that's what we're going to do now. So we open terminal. I don't know why it just opened to give me. So you run go into your spotlight, just write terminal, and it'll give it to you. So I have it open, and you're going to write chmod space a oops plus oh my god plus x space. Now that you have that you want to drag in server.command. Make sure to have a space after the X. And put in this and click enter. This will happen and now you have permission. Now you can click terminal. And that was actually, this is it. So you can now start the server and it, it'll take a while and give you all these warnings and stuff. But that's okay because this is your first time starting the server. It will take a bit longer than usual. But after you fix things up, it will go, it will go better. Now, uh, the server I will show you now in the server.property file right here how to make it go how to make it run a bit faster if you're not planning on having 50 people in your server or 20 people in your server. So it says done for help. Type help. So if you type in help, it'll give you all these commands, whatever. To stop it, just do stop, and it'll save chunks. You have to wait for this. So every time you stop the server, you do this, and then it's like press completed. Then you can close the window. So. You have this plugins folder, which in another video I might make if you guys ask for it inside the comments. I'll show you how to get plugins for your craft bucket server uh, and stuff like that. So uh, go into server properties, and here you'll have. Now this is like a YML file, and if you guys don't know what YML is, it's it's a sort of like text edit. It's a to it's a text type, but the thing is, if you have a space here, it ruins the entire file. The entire file, the YML, would be destroyed, and you can't do anything with it. So if you're programming something with YML, uh, I'm not sure if you can do that, actually, but and you have one little like space or period in the wrong place, it'll ruin everything, and you'll have hours spending time trying to find where you went wrong. So same thing with here, kind of. You want to be careful. So allow nether. Now, if you're going to play with friends and stuff, I would put this to false until you actually go to the nether, then end the server and turn it true, because it takes out a lot of lag. I mean, if you have a computer with really good specs and stuff, then, I mean, don't bother with this part. Just, you know, you can go make your own server now. 
but if you have a laptop like me that has, doesn't have the best specs and doesn't have that much space on it left or RAM, stuff like that, so loud nether, false. That'll stop it from every time you start the server generating another time. Now, after the equals, there's no space and right in false, F-A-L-S-E. And if you want to turn it on, do true. No capitals or anything, just false. Level name, world, just keep it at that. It's just the simplest thing to do. Uh, you can ignore these two, enable query and enable allow flight. Actually, allow flight, put it to true because if you're going on game mode to build something, it will not let you fly sometimes. It's sometimes glitchy. Um, or if you have fly mod, you want to do this true so you don't get kicked from the server. Server port, keep it like this until you know what you're doing really with your server and you want to port forward and stuff. So, if you don't understand what that is, I mean, you can look up a video or ask me to show you, but it's not that complicated. Level type, now this is just like when you start up your, your Minecraft world, you want a flat world or uh, a default world. So default, you put in capitals, and for flat, you don't put super flat, just put flat capitals that's it so i'm going to keep it at default uh, okay archon you can just uh just ignore that level seed is you know you know you guys know what that is so if there's a seed that you want you can just put in here and you'll get that world server ip you want to put the ip of the uh, sorry about the phone there of uh your hamachi or your port forwarded thing oh my god phone so uh in the leave inside the comment below if you need help with uh hamachi because I will show you, I can show you how to make your own network and have people join. It's easier than port forwarding and changing all your port. So I would put my IP here. If you port forwarded, then don't put an IP here because it will automatically generate. Sometimes it will make a new IP. Spawn NPCs. Now, if you really need this, I mean, you could put it on. I'm just going to put it to false for now. But, you know, I'm actually going to keep it a true. But whitelist. Now, this is something else. This is like if you want only a few people to be able to join your server and like a whole bunch of people know your IP and you don't want to ban them all you can whitelist put it on true and then here there should be a whitelist.txt whitelist.txt and you just put in all their names in there so spawn animals you want to put that true online mode true and if someone has like one of your friends have a hacked version of minecraft I know a few fr my friends do so I put it to false I usually put it to false whoops spell that now, this will allow people to hack it easier, but I mean, if you don't give out your IP, the chances of that happening are very, very slim. PvP, if you're playing a hardcore survival, true, if you don't want it, false, you know, that doesn't really do anything different. Difficulty, it's 1 to 3, put it 1 or 3 or 2, that will change the difficulty of uh, the zombies, the skeleton of the monsters, stuff like that, the rate of your heart healing and stuff like that, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, I usually put it at 2. Game mode, this is if you want everyone to start in the first in game mode 1 or game mode uh, 0, which is survival mode. You can change that really easily with commands. It's easier. Max players, see, this is where the lag comes in. You want to just put it to 5 or 6. I mean, if you're just a few friends playing, I mean, if you have a, a, a dedicated, not a dedicated server, but a public server, then, you know, keep it at 50 or 20. But if you're playing with friends, which I usually do, I put it at 5 or 6. And if someone, and if a whole bunch of people want to join, you know, I'll just... Uh, put the number higher. Monsters, I usually put them true. Structures, true. View distance, just put it to 5. I mean, it doesn't really do anything. Message of the day, this can have spaces and everything. A Minecraft server. So when I join the server, it'll say a Minecraft server when I have plugins, usually. So you just want to exit it and save. And now when I start in my server, it won't take as long because it only has one world to generate. And this world has already, the end has already, see, look how fast that went. So, uh, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, you know, any suggestions will be taken into account, and I'll try to make videos for everyone, so, uh,